Next, on Animal Attractions, which one of these puppies will pass your puppy test? Everything you need to know before you bring home a new kitty. Our pet trainer finds a shelter pet a new loving home. And home tips for fleas, puppy teething, and upset stomachs. All this and more on this episode of Animal Attractions TV. Don't worry, you won't need a pencil for our puppy test. Are you one of the millions of people expecting a new member of the family? The furry kind with four paws and a face that melts your heart? In other words, are you getting a puppy? Well, we're here to help with a series of tips and techniques to guide you both through your puppy's first 12 months. <laughs> Puppies are so adorable, every one of them. So when it comes to finding your pick of the litter, how do you choose your perfect match? Well, you can start by looking at your lifestyle and expectations. If you're very active, then you want to pick a breed that can keep up with your pace. If you like to shop, maybe you prefer a stylish shopping companion who fits snugly in your purse. Or maybe a devoted pint-sized hound will fit right with your pack. <laughs> now here's the really interesting part. Did you know that when you look at a litter of puppies, you can actually evaluate individual personality traits even more specifically by using a puppy personality test? When you're looking at a litter of puppies, what you're going to notice is that each puppy has a unique behavior. Some puppies hang out on the edge chewing a bone quietly. Some hover in the corner afraid of the new people and the new noises they're not accustomed to hearing. Other puppies are ganging up on one another, biting each other's ears, and chasing each other around the whelping box. The wild puppy that bullies the other puppies, runs and tries to climb out of the crate, may seem like a lot of fun when he's little, but he's going to grow up to be very assertive. He will need a regimented training routine to keep him in line. The middleman is good for families, particularly with a lot of children with different schedules to balance. They need training, but don't have to have the rigid training schedule that a more dominant dog would demand. Passive dogs avoid chaos. They like things that are very routine and very calm. A person that will take the time and be supportive is great for a passive puppy. <laughs> What's good to keep in mind is that like people, puppies come into the world with unique personalities. And with our simple puppy test, you can find the one that's the right match for you. First, just observe the litter. See if you can identify the different personalities. Next, if you can, narrow it down to two or three puppies that you especially like. If you have children, it's always a good idea to bring one of them along, because dogs see children as an entirely different species from adults. And then you can see how the puppy will react to a child. Now here's how to do the puppy test and keep track of the results. Use A for active, S for shy, and M if the puppy's somewhere in the middle. We're going to test them now for how relaxed they are and also how well they accept your handling. So I'm going to pick this little puppy right here. And what you do is you pick them up right by the middle and see if they're relaxed or they wiggle. That's a pretty relaxed puppy. Now remember, there's no right or wrong here. We're just simply evaluating their personality. Then the next thing you do is you turn them upside down and cradle them like a baby. Oh, this is a very kind of a scary position that might make them a little insecure. And that puppy's a little insecure like that, but it's okay because then the next thing you do is you, is you hold them close to you and you give them strokes. There, he relaxed right down. So he's responding very well to handling and is a pretty relaxed puppy. Oh, how sweet. Then you put him on your knees and just see if they'll sit there. He looks pretty comfortable. All right, so I would give this puppy a pretty relaxed score because that hanging upside down like a baby, that's kind of an insecure position for them. Another bit of information to test for is how drawn your puppy is to people. So it's really simple. You just put them down on the floor and see if they follow you. Come on, puppy. Okay, so try it again. Here we go, come on. Okay, this is a little brown puppy. Oh, how cute. That was very cute. She looked like she was already starting to learn the heel. <laughs> so she followed right along with me and she was very playful. So I think I'd give her an A for active. 
This test is going to show us how they alert to new stimuli. Are they frightened or are they curious? So I'm going to come into the puppy pen here and I'm going to make a noise here. Start with just a little noise, there you go, just to see how curious they are. And these puppies are very, very curious in a real healthy manner, so I'd give them an A. An A for active. Look, she's even, she's been getting A's the whole time. But everybody's doing very, very well. Yes, you are. <laughs> so let's see how these little guys scored. Oh, you all passed. Yes, there's going to be the perfect person for each one of you. And if you're a dog lover like I am, then you know that there is nothing that compares to having the perfect dog in your life. They make us smile, and they're even good for our health. Now, I know that puppies can be a lot of expense and trouble, but they are worth it a hundred times over when you find your perfect puppy. Does your puppy seem to always have something in its mouth? Teething can be a painful experience for puppies like Kara. Here's an idea that will soothe those aching gums and help you and your puppy get through those trying times called teething. And the best part is, you won't have to spend a single dime. You'll need a clean washcloth or small dish towel, soak it with water, tie it in a knot, and just place it in the freezer. When it's fully frozen, give it to your puppy for a soothing cold treat to chew on. One word of caution, if you have a small breed, check with your vet to make sure there's no unusual sensitivity to cold items for your little pet. If the coast is clear, give those puppy gums some relief. They love these icy treats. knows more about why cats behave in their mysterious ways than Roger Tabor. We say no one. He's devoted more than 30 years pioneering studies and observing cats in over 25 countries. He's here to share his knowledge and experience so you can enjoy the benefits that come with a better understanding of the wonderful creatures we call cats. Today it's all about what you need to know when planning to add a kitten to your household. It's so easy to have great expectations, to misunderstand what your relationship is going to be about between something as cute as this, which will grow into a big cat, and yourself for the rest of its life. So understanding a little bit about cats in general is helpful. Cats we know are independent animals. But what does that really mean? I guess it's easy just to make a comparison. Think of dogs. We don't think of them as independent. Why is that? Because their ancestors, the wolves, hunted in packs. Whereas the cat, the cat that's so independent, hunts alone. And if you're going to hunt alone, then the whole of your raison d'etre, everything about your life, is based on taking those decisions. You're not a cog in a machine like a dog or a wolf. You are the entire machine. And understanding that will really help your relationship with your cat. Do you want to bring a cat home into your life? Well, you have to do a few things first. It's important that it's kitty friendly, that you have to make sure that the cat can't injure itself. So there's a bit of preparation work you have to do. Think about what a kitten might see from their position near the floor. Then go along, remove any tempting items that could be dangerous if swallowed. Anything from paper clips or plastic bags to poisonous plants. You can visit our website for a complete list. Bear in mind that kitties love to explore and they do it by touching, by tasting, by sniffing and chewing. Secure all dangling cords, like on blinds, phones and electrical cords. Remove breakables and valuable items and store them out of reach. But remember, where is out of reach? As a kitten ages, when they're about 10 weeks, they begin to climb and then suddenly there's a whole new level of opportunities for trouble. Even if you're very thorough, you never want to leave your little one unattended. If you can't watch them, put them into a safe zone. Unlike many breeds of dogs, kitties really like a hideaway, particularly if it's elevated. Remember, they're used to climbing trees. To create a safe zone for your new kitten, choose a place that is seldom used, like a small, quiet bathroom. Put in there the travel carrier with some vet fleece. It'll be a bit like mum. 
and try to find what litter it's been using and then use that in the litter box. Put down a bowl, put down food. What you're really doing is trying to make that transition easier. And never use somewhere like a garage because there's fumes and dangers from moving cars. A guest bathroom is a good place for the litter box too. Quiet, private and out of the way. You'll be delighted to know that once your home is kitten proofed, they're fairly easy to live with. They're most undemanding animals, so their requirements for you to go and buy are not that high. A cat carrier, a good quality kitten food, food and water dishes, litter box, litter and a scoop, toys and grooming supplies. I also suggest a scratching post, and if your budget will allow it, a kitty condo. But a bed, well, for kiddies, that can be optional. They're just as likely to choose a place of their own, a pillow, an arm of a sofa, a chair, or you. The basis of a good relationship with a dog is very much about us being the pack leader. So what's the basis of our relationship with a cat? If you think about it, with a young little kitten like this one, we go in and we stroke it. And that's like mother's tongue going over the little kitten. And then they sit on our laps and they're getting all that warmth up from us as if they're beside mum. And perhaps it's this mum and kitten relationship which is really at the basis of our close, long-lasting life. All across America, there are millions of lost, abandoned, and mistreated animals being held in local shelters. Many of them could find loving and caring homes, but because of the limited space and the overwhelming number of animals taken in, there's not much time left for them. Coach Ronald White believes that professional training can help make some of these dogs more adoptable, and he wants to make sure there's a happy ending to these shelter stories. Here at Animal Control, we bring in almost 100 animals a day. We try our best to go ahead and A, make the animals comfortable, B, try to see what we can do to work them up for adoptions. One of the reasons Noel has been here for so long is because he is a high energy dog and the high energy dogs, trying to find the right owner, somebody who's also high energy and can keep up with that dog, it's very hard to find those people and match them up with that, with that particular dog. It's definitely important for all the animals to get obedience training and so, especially with uh, the high energy ones such as Noel. Well, there's so many homeless dogs down at the shelter that I wanted to make a difference. So they called me to pick up a stray, and uh, I'm going down here to look at this dog that I can train to find a home for. It's a Whippet mix. It uh -huh. came in as a stray. It's a really sweet dog. It's about six, seven months old, and because of its puppy as well as it's a Whippet, it's yeah. got lots of energy. Oh, okay. Here he is. He's about 20 pounds or oh, so. Okay. Really sweet. Come here, Noel. Well, my first impression when I seen the little white dog, he was calm and he wasn't aggressive and he looked like he'd be a, an ideal dog for somebody. Most stray dogs, uh, people don't want to take them on because they don't know their background. They didn't raise them as a puppy. But it's a, once you train the dog, he's a great dog. Most dogs that come to me are already uh, living with somebody. They know them and they're getting too much love and not enough structure. But nobody can tell me about this stray dog to come from the shelter, so I have to learn him. He's probably not had either love or structure because he's a stray. Here you are, buddy. This is boot camp right here. Come on, let me see. Come here. Come on. Let's see if you like to play with two ways. Huh? Come well, what I noticed here. about the dog, uh, Go get it. he wouldn't listen to me when I called him. Come here. I would say, come here. Come he here. would just keep going the opposite direction. But he was real friendly. You can play with him oh. when you was up close with him, but if he got distance from you, he wouldn't listen to you. He'd just be gone. Good boy. So I knew that had something to do with him roaming the streets and being a stray. But I had to get his attention. And a hungry dog is a smart dog. I know if he's hungry, he'll look at the food and he'll look at me because I got it. And we will bond, and he'll know I'm the owner by feeding him, and I'll put the treat up by my face, and let he'll look at me, and then I'll give it to him, because I want him to recognize me. So once we, me and the dog have got to learn each other, now it's time to go through some obedience. You ready to start walking? Come on, heel. When I say heel, I walk, and when I stop. say stop, I'll pull gently back and tell him stop. 
and then I repeat it over and over oh, to him. Sit. That's a good boy. I had a feeling that he was a runaway because when I hooked him on my fence, I seen that he would keep jumping up and down like he wanted to go over it. I wanted to take that away from him immediately. I pulled down and I told him off. Off. Good girl. As long as I say off when he jumps off. on people, jumps off. on the fence, anything he's up on is off. off. He'll pick that command up. That dog did great. He's working and I'm ready to find that dog a home. Come here. You ready to go home? You ready to meet your family, buddy, huh? You did good. Well, I have a file of people that are looking for our dog at the shelter. I found the perfect person for this dog, and his name is Andy. And he likes to jog. He likes to ride his bicycle with a dog. With both of them high energy like that, I think they'd be perfect together. Hey, Coach, how are you doing? Hey, Andy, how you doing? I'm good. I can see how happy he was to see the dog, and he had never met him, but he liked the way he looked. I'm excited to see uh, what she can do and, and everything. Okay, well, I'm gonna step right over here and show you how she's trained. All right. You can just stay right there and watch the big picture. Stop, sit. Then when I tell her down, I do I put my hand here and I tell her down, down, stay. And I'll stand tall. Well, I trained the dog, now it's time to train the owner. And the first thing we'll start with, with Andy, is showing how he should train that dog to look at him with food. You come there in you front of him. All right, right in front. Yep. Should I bend down that all? Yeah, just let him smell it and pull it up there by your eyes. Now just break her a piece off. The puppy. Tell her to treat. treat. Once I seen the dog looking at Andy, I knew it was time to start training the dog and Andy together. So what we're going to do now is have you to go forward and you'll say heel. Heel means to walk. So you'll say heel, and then when you turn, you say place. Okay. Okay, just relax. All right. Heel. Start walking. There you go. Now turn to your right and say place. Place. Keep walking. Place. Keep walking. Place. There you go, just like that. Keep walking. I'll tell you when to turn. Hands down to your side. Turn to your right. Say place. Place. Keep walking. Come back this way. Now say stop. Stop. Tell her down. There you go. There Stand go. tall. Say stay. Stay. There you go. Oh, look at that. She did great. She's doing really You're good. You're doing good. And all you have to do is keep this up. Wonderful. Because of Wonderful. where she come from. She's a stray. She wants that structure. Andy and this dog are the perfect match and uh, every day he should work the dog 10 or 15 minutes to keep Wait, the training up. And now the dog doesn't have to go back to the shelter. He'll always be there with Andy. Good dog. There may be a perfect animal companion waiting for you right now. Visit your local shelter or humane society. You could be the author of the next chapter of their shelter stories. You are such a good girl. Millions of dogs like Noel here come from dog shelters. And bringing home a new pet can also bring with it a lot of uncertainty. So here's some tips to keep in mind when you bring home your new dog from the shelter. That way you'll have the best start possible. Ready to go for a walk? Oh, she's ready to go. Plan on bringing your pet home on the weekend so you can be with him when he first comes home. Before you bring your pet inside, take him on a long walk. This will tire him out and hopefully curb some of the excitement of being in a new home. When you enter your house, limit your new dog to one room or area at a time. Give your pet plenty of time in each room to familiarize himself with all the new smells and sounds of his new home. For the first few days, try and limit the amount of excitement and visitors that interact with your new pet. You want to give your pet all the time you can to get to know his new family. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. A trained dog is a happy dog and Noel here is just learning. It's very important to start your training as soon as you get your dog home. One of the most important things is to be consistent. Sit. Stay. And let them always know that you're the leader. Many behavioral problems arise in dogs when the owners let the dogs think that they're the ones in charge. For more advice on this and training tips, visit AnimalAttractionsTV.com. What an irresistible face. The Cocker Spaniel puppy might be the cutest thing in the world. But did you know that they originated as hunting dogs? 
That means there's traits and characteristics that you might want to consider before deciding whether a Cocker Spaniel is the right fit for your lifestyle and your family. Here, take a look. Cocker Spaniels are one of the most common family pets that we see today. Cocker Spaniels are normally about 15 inches tall and they weigh around 15 to 30 pounds depending on whether they're a male or a female. They also have beautiful hair coats that require lots of grooming, so make sure if you're going to get one that you're willing to spend the time grooming them. We chose a Cocker Spaniel because of the size. We did a little research, we found out that they weren't going to get very big and at the time we bought them our kids were little, so we didn't want like this monstrous dog like knocking our kids down, so we figured we would stay small. That's how we chose him. It fits very well in a family situation with kids, even lots of kids. They love to be around children, they love to play, and it's a type of breed that the more activity, the more things going on, the happier the dog's gonna be. They need lots of exercise. You definitely need to be the type of owner that's gonna spend lots and lots of time exercising this type of a breed. We take him outside to exercise uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, this route that we take takes about, I don't know, 10 minutes to walk it, I guess. And then there's a, like a, I don't know, probably a 50 yard stretch. And I'll just start like on a dead run. And he's like running alongside me. But as far as vigorous exercise, that's about it. A lot of you may be concerned that you've heard stories about cockers that are biters. Overall, as a breed, that certainly isn't true. Because of the popularity of the breed, we have seen some that have turned out to have a personality problem like that. I would never known him to walk up to somebody who comes into the house and just start biting him. They would jump up on him with his front feet, his tail starts going. I've never seen him bite anybody. I've never have. There's some other conditions that we see also because of this inbreeding, and some of those being allergies, where if you're living in the South, you're gonna have year-round problems, a lot of ear infections, which can be related to allergies, and then lots of eye issues. And once again, this all goes back to inbreeding and overbreeding of the breed as they went on through the years because of the popularity. So be very careful, once again, when you're buying one of these puppies to make sure you're using a reputable breeder. I couldn't be happier, the kids couldn't be happier. They come home from school and he just he welcomes them to the door and um, I wouldn't trade him for the world. If I do have to go get another one, I think that the Cocker Spaniel would be the way to go. Just like with kids, sometimes our pets can feel under the weather from time to time. As a new pet parent, we may want to run to the veterinarian at the first sign that something might be wrong. But an experienced pet owner knows that there are some little things that you can manage at home, just like tummy troubles. If your pet has just a few episodes of either vomiting or diarrhea and is otherwise happy and active, it could be no big deal. Before heading to the doctor, you can try withholding food for 24 hours, but do give them free access to water. However, puppies and kittens should be seen by your veterinarian right away. A 24-hour break should allow their tummy time to rest and recover, and will often be all that is needed if they ate something they shouldn't have, like trash, or caught a mild virus. After 24 hours, it is best to start feeding them again slowly, ideally using boiled chicken or boiled hamburger and white rice. Feed them just a small bite or two at a time, then wait for about an hour to make sure they can hold it down. This is like when you or I get the flu. We don't eat a cheeseburger and fries right when our appetite returns. We start with a couple of saltine crackers or maybe some soup. If successful, then you can continue to feed small amounts frequently through the day until once again they are eating normally. Then gradually switch back to their normal diet. If your pet's condition does not improve, or you just get that feeling that something's not quite right, never hesitate to contact your veterinarian. After all, caring for these little guys is what we love to do. This is Buster and he's a new kitten, but sometimes in his life he might be troubled with fleas like so many of our pets are, especially during the summer months. And whenever I can find anything that helps control fleas in a natural way, that's a good thing. And we found something called neem oil. Neem oil is a natural botanical ingredient that you can find in a lot of tick and flea control products now. So just look on the label for neem oil, or you can get it in its pure form. It comes in a little dropper bottle like this. You can find it at your natural grocery store or health food store. And if you get it like this, you can take it home and use it in a couple of different ways. You can apply it directly to your pet's coat, 
or enhance your current pet shampoo. Just add a few drops to each shampoo. This can help repel fleas and soothe your pet's coat and skin. It even helps pet skin allergies. Neem oil may be fairly new to the Western world, but it's been used in India for medicinal purposes for centuries. It's been around since 4000 BC. They use it for everything. For more great tips like this, visit us on the web at AnimalAttractionsTV.com. I'm Megan Blake, and on behalf of everyone here at Animal Attractions, thanks for joining us.